months ahead of his deadly attack in Westminster, in which four people were killed. Who wants to do these kind of things? There was nothing in the man's demeanor that all made me think, you've got to be wary of this guy. Masood killed three people with a hired car as he drove into pedestrians on Westminster Bridge before crashing the car. 50 people were injured in the attack and 31 required hospital treatment. Two people. Right, a few years ago, uh, me and Jan um, we used to work on uh, private ambulances, PTS, and it was the, one of the best jobs we've ever done. And we worked. Basically, what we, our job was was going down, picking patients up, taking them to the appointments, bringing them home from hospital, taking them back to the home address, and we worked with a, a number of crews. And this is a true story. We worked in Brighton, in dropping patients off at the Royal Sussex, Eastbourne, uh, Worthington, other other hospitals around the area. And during this, uh, it just goes to show this is a very this is a true story. We stayed at a hotel called the Preston Park Hotel. Excellent hotel. And um, people said it's not a very nice hotel. It's not the. It was absolutely brilliant, and it was the staff that made it. Um, it was absolutely brilliant. Even Debbie, I mean, one of the receptionists, Debbie. She was absolutely brilliant, that girl, and to me, um, which he was really good with us. Uh, let us use the microwave for doing our meals and things like that, so we didn't have to pay a fortune. So we could go and get microwave meals and use the uh, microwave in the hotel. Breakfast was absolutely beautiful there as well. But the story is, when we stayed there, we stayed at the Preston Park Hotel. When we stayed at the hotel, um, we stayed in room 228. And at this room 228, it was also known for the terrorist um, on Westminster Bridge. This is Preston Park Hotel, just a couple of miles from Brighton seafront. This is where the killer, uh, Khalid Masood, spent his last night. 228 at the Preston Park Hotel, uh, and this is where he spent his last night, where he enjoyed his last meal, uh, which reportedly uh, uh, was a kebab. Let's speak to uh, the owner, Sabir, uh, Sabir Toomey, uh, the owner of Preston Park Hotel. Uh, the last few days has been very... Uh... Um, stress and confusion really with what's happened with uh, the event uh, and, and Wednesday morning in London. Uh, now when the guest stayed here with us um, the Tuesday night, uh, Khalid Masoud who, who uh, checked in lunchtime at about 1 o'clock, um, he was um, very friendly, normal guest we looked after. Um, yes, he, he, he walked into the reception and he had a chat with my, my colleague about rate. So uh, I come out and met him and said hello to him and welcome him to the, to the hotel. Now when he stayed with us uh, on Friday, so as a return guest, he was very friendly, uh, laughing and joking, uh, telling us stories about where he lived. And obviously we have taken correct information about um, his uh, address, telephone number, him, you know, uh, all the details car registration number and what, ki what, ki what kind of car it is. And, uh, uh, there used to be a trouser press here, didn't there? That's what they said. They've taken away a trouser press over here and then if you just pan round here to the right, um, you can see that they've, uh, the police have been quite thorough. They've even taken away the toilet uh, roll holder there. So uh, lots of items for the police to take away. Um, they've also... It just goes to show how close to home you can be for situations like that. I mean, that was shocking. It was terrible. Khalid Masood, his name was. He killed four people that day. Uh, you just don't realise. We'd only been left at hotel a few months, and it just shows how close you can be to somebody like that. He's stayed in the same room what we was in. So you can't get any closer than that. This is a true story. Um, 
we get a phone call when it was happened, when it had happened, and that uh, off one of the lads who was on the ambulances with us when we was down in Brighton, Tony, and he said, "Have you checked?" He said, it's, "He stayed in the same room what you was in." I said, "All right." So obviously we we're going to look at it. This is over five years ago now, but it just goes to show how close you can be to uh, somebody like that. But I'm just going to show you a bit of clipping now of uh, what he did. There has been a terror attack. In the aftermath, the stunned calm on Westminster Bridge. A passerby capturing the moments after the murderous car journey before emergency services arrived. And Pedestrians and cyclists targeted by the killer, treated and comforted on the ground. Eyewitnesses to the carnage console each other. Some break the news on their phones, others clearly distraught. A dreadful attack just metres from the heart of Britain's democracy, prompting defiance from the Prime Minister. Confusion and panic as gunshots rang in Parliament Square. And this is where the car ended its bloody mission, smashed into the railings. Oh, my God! The attacker on foot then forced his way into New Palace Yard, where he stabbed a police officer in front of horrified onlookers. And wasn't moving, although he did then gently move uh, for a couple of seconds. The guy who I assume was the driver of this 4x4 got out of the car and suddenly sprinted uh, away from the scene and that was followed by four what sounded very much like gunshots to me. The attacker was shot by colleagues of the injured officer. The suspect then taken away on a stretcher, stripped, his wounds covered. The red circles mark two knives lying on the cobbles. On a busy day in Parliament, the Prime Minister and hundreds of MPs and staff were inside the palace. Counter-terrorism specialist firearm officers, the elite response team, raced inside. The Prime Minister extracted and removed at speed. In her wake, thousands of confused tourists, workers and commuters. Inside Parliament, two hours after Prime Minister's questions, a clerk ran into the chamber with the news. Step, I am now going to suspend the sitting of the House. This House is now suspended, but please wait here. To me, um, the manager of the, of the Preston Park Hotel, even he says you couldn't... I've thought that that man could have done it. I mean, I'm going to show you some clippings, some video footage of the man going in, picking his car up, and obviously going for a doner kebab in the uh, takeaway. So it just goes to show how close to home someone like that can be. And you won't you you wouldn't expect this man to do what he did. I mean them poor people's lives and the people who was injured on the bridge it's uh doesn't bear thinking about. But just like I say, I, I, it's always been in my mind of that day when that happened we could have been so close to that incident in the hotel when you go back past his uh, history you can see that his knife someday in the past in the pub he could have done that at the hotel at the preston park hotel to the staff he could have done an incident there when the staff found out at that hotel what had happened I wouldn't uh, like to 
have thought what they was going through because it must have been so real for them knowing that it could have been them or have they not realised it could have been them they were speaking to the reception obviously when you go back to his history of Khalid Masood he was very very violent I'm just going to show you a little bit of history of uh, Khalid Masood now so you can see what he was and where he come from but um, anyway watch it tell me what you think a home counties boy born in Kent and brought up in Sussex his younger years were littered with a catalogue of criminal convictions and a violent past which Danny Smith experienced firsthand in 2003 met him in a pub in Eastbourne uh, seemed like a pretty decent fella um, had a few beers of him a few days later we fell out. He tried his best to kill me. He pulled a knife, um, held it to my face, and then all of a sudden, bang, hit me with a knife, straight through my face. Um, the knife went through my nose, through my tongue. Residents in the small village of Northiam in East Sussex remember his volatility, with reports he sought professional help, but they believe it was prison where he changed from a criminal to a wannabe jihadi. Maybe violent, you know, when you had a drink, um, but it doesn't mean you're going to go and r run someone over on Westminster Bridge, does it? Um, but, I mean, I think he, when he was in jail, he must have been radicalised, wasn't it? Um, something happened. But while police have released this image of the man behind the UK's deadliest terror attack since 7 7, four days on, they're still trying to form a picture of his motivations and acquaintances and what or who triggered a 52-year-old father of three to become a mass murderer or even directed to kill. Detectives have seized 2,700 items from searches across the country, including massive amounts of computer data and around 3,500 witnesses have been spoken to. China to monitor and did not feature on a list of 3,000 suspects so you can see in that video, um, would you have suspected him as uh, being a violent person, laughing and joking and doing what he did? Um, it's a big shock to everybody. I mean, it's over five years ago now, but still, it always sits in my mind how close we was to something like that. I know it was a couple of months, but, it, well, I don't even think it was a couple of months. I don't think it was that far, a month and a half, something like that. Um, you think to yourself, we could have been there. He could have gone off on one in the hotel. I mean, there was some sort of thing. He said he had a gas bottle, he picked a gas bottle up. Was he going to blow that up or whatever? He, nobody knows what was going through his mind. I mean, to go into... Guy done a kebab, and I mean, it'd be the last thing on my mind. But he's done it, he's uh, shot dead. But he thinks he's have how close that could have been. But anyway, that was just a, a quick video. Well, it's not a quick video, is it? It was just a video to show you um, life's too short. Um, it could have been it could be anybody but uh, thanks for watching please hit that subscribe button I'm not going to say give it a thumbs up or this one um, but you never know what's around the corner so bye for now and I'll see you all soon on the next one